Hello, a little lighter fare this week as we uh, only have to do maybe five or six verses a day. Uh, as it turns out, it's the Friday is the largest chunk of verses uh, this week. We're in chapter 21 of Acts, where Paul is giving a presentation, a sermon, a speech uh, to the crowds in Jerusalem. Remember, there's been a mob. They thought he took a Gentile into the temple. Uh, the Roman uh, commander had to swoop in to, to rescue him, but he asked if he could just um, talk to the mob, and for some reason, the commander lets him do it. And so we begin verse 1 with Paul's uh, speech to the crowd, and this is what he says. Men, brothers, and fathers, vocatives, all vocatives, hear the defense of me to y'all now. Okay, apologia, uh, apology in the older sense of a defense is what we have going on here. Uh, interesting wording here. This will give fits to the beginning Greek students. Hear of me the to you now defense. <laughs> if, kind of, if we're going to do a, our own translation of the Bible, we'll probably have to wiggle that around a little bit. Uh, this is a um, imperative. Sigma Alpha tells me what kind of imperative it is. It's a aorist active imperative. Um, the second person plural imperatives look an awful lot like the indicative. In fact, in the present tense, you can't tell the difference by form between the second person plural imperative and the second person plural indicative. You can in the aorist. Any guesses as to how you know that this is, this is definitely an imperative form? You know how? That's right, because the first letter isn't augmented. In the indicative, it would be a cousite. Uh, but because it's an imperative, it doesn't have the, the lengthening on the front. Uh, why does this have two accents, you ask? Why? Because mu is a mute, moocher. Uh, it's an enclitic. It doesn't do its own access, accent. So it's going to make acousita come up with an accent on the end there, which made acousita very happy. Okay, verse 2. And having heard that in the Aramaic dialect he was speaking to them. Uh, okay, so having heard, Sigma Alpha tells me it's aorist. My aunt is a active participle. So this is an aorist active participle. Oh, no, no augment here either, right? No augments outside the indicative. Nominative masculine plural. Having heard. Having because it's aorist? Heard. It's participle. I, I translated this as Aramaic, but it, it literally says, of course, in the Hebrew dialect, but I'm pretty sure it's talking about Aramaic uh, here. Um, he was speaking. This is uh, imperfect because it's the present uh, stem with an augment. There's the augment. Third person singular from prosphoneo, little crash at the end. Uh, uh, they were holding silence more because they heard he was speaking in Aramaic. Uh, this is again the, uh, this looks to be the aorist actually. Uh, so I should translate it, they held silence more. Uh, I know it's aorist because eskon. Uh, the imperfect of echo is akon, uh, who I think was a rap singer. But that's not important right now. Okay, so um, uh, they held silence more. And he said, verse 3, he's going to tell, I, quote, I am a man, a Jew. Um, I think uh, I'm a Jewish man maybe is the sense there. Having been born in Tarsus of Cilicia. So this, this first letter got a little beside itself and put an epsilon in the middle. It is perfect tense, yes. And men are passive or middle participles. Uh, so I think this is passive. Having, because it's perfect. Been, uh, because it's passive. Participle, born. Um, now, uh, what is the nuance of the perfect tense? Well, he's still born, right? Not, he's, anyway, he's still alive. So he has been born in Tarsus of Cilicia. And having been raised, you know, the fact that this men are passive participles, is that the men is shoved right on the on the end of the stem. There's no connecting vowel. There's no ominous. Uh, tells me that this is perfect mill. This is perfect perfect mill or passive, uh, without even looking at the front here. And I don't even know this word. Uh, on a on a tramo or on a on a trapo. Actually, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, could be on a trepo. Um, but it, it's reduplicated. Uh, the th thetas reduplicate with a tau because the breathy reduplicates with the unvoiced, unbreathy, uh, and puts an epsilon in the middle. So this is perfect. 
a passive participle from some word on a trepo or on a trefo, something like that. I'm sorry, look it up. Um, in the city this, in this city, at the feet of Gamaliel, and I talk a little bit about that in the podcast. Uh, having, so I, I have, uh, having been born up, and I'm still raised up, right? He's still alive, he's still a grown man. Uh, having been trained, and he's still trained. So he knows his training, right? It's perfect. The, the P got a little beside itself and put an epsilon in the middle. Uh, and again, the ending is shoved right on the stem. It's not amenos. Da, 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 da. So there's no ah or o, oh, however you want to say it. And so this is a perfect middle or passive participle. Here, passive, having been uh, trained, paiduo, paideia, good old ancient education, uh, paidudic. Um, it has paidudic val value, training value. So having been trained uh, accurately, according to accuracy, having been trained accurately of the fatherly law, of the law of the elders, in other words, okay? So I know I got stuff up here, Paul says. I know Pharisee stuff. You think you know Pharisee stuff? I know Pharisee stuff. I know the Father stuff. Being a zealot of God, um, as he was, just as all y'all are today, I was just like you people. I know where you're coming from. You're wrong. <laughs> Verse 4, who um, I persecuted this way, the way, the way of Christ, the way of the Lord. I persecuted this way. This is a, an aorist. How do I know? Because a C is the key to hidden sigma. So I have hidden sigma alpha. Uh, sigma alpha is aorist. It was the augment. So it's from dioko to persecute. Dioko ono. Uh, okay, so I persecuted this way unto death. Um, chaining, binding, and delivering into prison both men and women. So these are both present participles. Paradidomi, uh, desmuo, which is not a verb I knew before today and probably will forget very quickly. Verse 5, uh, as also the high priest witnesses to me and all the presbytery, all the elders, all the, all the old leaders, uh, against whom, that is against these uh, followers of the way, also having received letters uh, to the brothers in Damascus, uh, so this is a uh, relative pronoun, genitive plural, uh, this is, uh, C is the key to hidden sigma, hidden sigma alpha. It is aorist. It's an aorist participle. It's from decomai, oh my, it's deponent. So it's, it is passive or middle, middle in form, but it's, pa it's active in meaning. Having received letters uh, to the brothers in Damascus, I was bringing them. I was going. No, I was going. Uh, this is the imperfect of peru, oh my, oh my, it's deponent. So it has a passive ending on it, middle ending. But it's the present stem with an augment, so it's imperfect. I was going. This is a fun one. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a fun Greek form every day? Well, we have one today. A C is the key to a hidden sigma. Ah, but this isn't a sigma alpha. In fact, that's a participle there, nominative masculine singular. So what is this? It's a future participle. This is the second future participle we've seen in Acts. You don't see future participles very often, but here's one right here. Future participle of ago, and the gamma and the sigma went and we got a xi. So this is the future active participle, nominative masculine singular, from ago, going to lead. So I went, going to lead also the ones there being, the ones being there, um, having been bound into Jerusalem. Okay, passive, this is a perfect, but it's passive. The ending's right on the stem, no omicron. Perfect passive participle, uh, accusative masculine plural. Uh, the, the ones being there, having been bound into Jerusalem, in order that they might be punished. Purpose clause, hinna clause. And hinna says, subjunctive is coming, subjunctive is coming. And indeed, this is subjunctive. Uh, the theta tells me it's an aorist passive subjunctive. This is the clue to subjunctive. It is a fried vowel. Instead of usi, it's osi. Um, and a fried vowel is the telltale sign of a subjunctive. And so, in order that they might be punished. Five verses were five verses into Paul's sermon to the mob. Uh, not, not organized crime, but to very angry Jews who think Paul has taken someone into the temple. See you tomorrow.